Like all, all right. my We're gonna call tonight's meeting to order. Can we get a uh, roll call vote, please? Or a roll call. <laughs> Not quite a vote yet. Council Member Story. Here. Council Member Brooks. Here. Council Member Bator. Here. Council Member Bertrand. Here. And Mayor Peterson. Here. Uh, before we begin tonight's meeting and, and do our Pledge of Allegiance, uh, I want to take a moment to acknowledge uh, the passing of former Council Member Ron Graves and to let the community know that there will be a gathering of friends at the Seymour Marine Discovery Center in Santa Cruz on January 12th, this Sunday at 1 p.m. Ron passed away late last year in his home in Capitola with his family by his side. Ron served on Capitola City Council for nearly 31 years. I'm 33, so that's almost as long as I've been alive. And while he and I didn't always agree on everything, I always respected Ron for his passion for our community, and we met to discuss things on the agenda. And while we didn't always agree in our discussions, we always walked away with a handshake or a hug, agreeing that we would speak again. Ron dedicated an amazing amount of time to the city of Capitola, and for that we are deeply thankful. And to his wife, Diane, for sharing him with all of us. With that, I would like to dedicate this meeting to the memory of Ron Graves and everything he did for this city. Now, if you'll please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Uh, tonight's meeting is cable cast live on Charter Communications Cable TV Channel 8 and is being recorded to be rebroadcast on the following Wednesday at 8 a.m. and on Saturday following the first rebroadcast at 1 p.m. on Charter Channel 71 and Comcast Channel uh, 25. Meetings can also be viewed live from our city website, cityofcapitola.org. Our technician tonight is Kingston Rivera. Thank you for being here. As a reminder, please turn off your cell phones. Um, and when you come for public comment, if you would like your name to be uh, spelled correctly in the record, please sign your name at the sheet at the podium. Uh, we're going to move on to item two, report on closed session. The council held a closed session on three items, conference with labor negotiator, conference with legal counsel regarding anticipated litigation, and liability claims, the claim of Stacey Austin. The latter of those three, the claim of Stacey Austin, will be, her, will be brought to the council in open session this evening. The other two claims, direction was given to staff. Thank you. Uh, item three, any additional materials? Uh, we received no public comment. However, some of you eagle eyes uh, caught a few items in the minutes. Um, we now have accessible furniture listed as well as updated titles. So uh, the corrected version is back there and it will be, uh, is already changed for when they are approved. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, item four, is there any additions or deletions to tonight's agenda? Staff has no changes. Thank you. Now is the time for public comment. Uh, it's the time for any members of the public to address the city council on any item not on tonight's agenda. You'll have three minutes. Uh, individuals can speak one time during oral communications and must address the entire city council. Uh, all speakers, as mentioned, are requested to print their name in the sign-in sheet if you would like it spelled correctly in the minutes. Is there any member of the public that would like to address the council? Yes, please. Welcome. And thank you, council, for listening. Welcome. Appreciate you all and your hard work. And we are the champions of preserving Capitola's unique cultural and historic character. The Capitola Mall redevelopment should reflect our charming town and be an extension of our delightful wharf, our beautiful beaches, and our quaint village. It has been proven that residential use for this site with the proposed 637 dwelling units does not fiscally benefit Capitola. Moving the bus station over by Macy's is a great idea, yet it certainly is not the solution to our existing well-known traffic problems. The 1,100 cars that are planned for the new residents should instead be anticipated for visitors and locals who will gladly spend their money at the new and improved mall. How many of the proposed low-income and senior housing residents will regularly shop and dine in the mixed-use environment or buy a $5 cup of coffee every day? 
What can we do to create a vibrant mall with a compelling draw and has a positive economic output benefiting Capitola? I see a hotel on the mall property, a mall and a hotel fitting there perfectly, transient tax, 12% naturally. Retail come, housing go, the housing has to go. We'll build a mall where people want to go, spend their dough, self-contained mall, and they will love it, so, so spend their dough. Housing never, 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 no, 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 no. I see a pizzeria, other restaurants we will go. Selling of goods and services is what we need. Concede, agreed. <laughs> okay, so you think you can own us with building sky high? Want to build it and leave it so we can ask why? Or maybe destination stop, maybe. Street grid's got to get out. Housing's got to get right out of here. Something really matters. Build community. One thing really matters. Let's make capital some money. Now Sheree McCoy goes. Thank you. Thank you. Any other member of the public that would like to address the council this evening? Hi, welcome. Hi. Karen Hanna. And I won't sing. Couldn't follow that up. <laughs> um, I'd just like to invite all of you and the uh, viewing audience to um, attend our next Sip and Stroll, which is uh, February 8th uh, in the village. Um, the businesses in the village are very proud of the fact that uh, all the profits from the Sip and Stroll go to nonprofits here in the county. Um, this event is going to generate $2,000 for the um, Capitola Foundation, which goes to support the CPR training for residents in Capitola, and $4,000 to the parks, Capitola Parks and Recreation. And this money could be used for, um, you know, we're not saying it has to be used for anything in particular, but it could be used for scholarships uh, for the children in Capitola to attend Camp Capitola uh, in the summer. So if you want tickets, just go to eventbrite.com and search for Capitola Sip and Stroll. And um, you know, it's, they're selling well. Every, uh, every other event, Sip and Stroll event is sold out, so we're, we're uh, really happy with that. All the events that the BIA put on that, that charge any kind of admission fee, um, the three sip and strolls, the cookie walk, and the window decorating contest, they all generate funds for local nonprofits. The total is between eighteen dollars and $20,000 a year. And uh, um, none of the money goes to the BIA. The expenses get paid out of, out of that money or out of our budget. Um, in addition, of course, additional um, uh, the business has given additional, I don't know, thousands and thousands of dollars to schools, other nonprofits, uh, associations. So uh, I'm just very proud of the fact that Capitola Village businesses are this generous um, in, the, in the county. Uh, Capitola, the city of Capitola has always been extremely generous to social service agencies and things, and the businesses are just following uh, in, that, in that same manner. Um, and I do see that there is on the agenda the review of the contributions received uh, by the city. And um, the, I just wanted to point out that the $2,000 from the Capitola Foundation is the $2,000 we gave them last year for the CPR training. So we're going to make that an annual, uh, an annual amount that we're going to do to support that CPR training. So I hope everybody gets their tickets and come. It's a great event, a lot of fun, always new, uh, unique little wineries, and we just uh, appreciate the community support. Thank you. Thank you. Any other member of the public that would like to address the council? Seeing none, we will bring it back for city council and staff comments. Does anyone on the city council have any comments this evening? Yes, we'll start with Vice Mayor Brooke. Great, thank you. Um, I received an invitation from the Santa Cruz County Office of Education that I would like to extend to my fellow council members and the public. They are hosting the, their COE uh, five-year strategic plan 
Um, they're having two events, one on January 21st at the Watsonville Civic Plaza and one on January 28th at the Santa Cruz Museum of Art and History between 5 and 7. Um, there will be, uh, it will be a COE resource fair, student performances, and updates from the superintendent and local leaders. So I have some more information here I can pass, pass out. Great, thank you. Councilmember Story, you had comments? Yeah, thank you, uh, Mayor. Uh, I just wanted to acknowledge that today, uh, January the 9th, is Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. Day, um, So I wanted to take this opportunity to publicly appreciate um, uh, the fine men and women who serve on the Capitola Police Department um, and keep us safe in our community. Um, their dedication, um, I think, is exemplary. And I would just encourage everyone to um, take a moment. And this day is maybe will is gone and passed, but maybe every day of the year we should take a moment to appreciate our law enforcement officers. So thank you, and I just wanted to acknowledge that. Thank you. Yes. No, it was, I, I did not know that, that um, the BIA uh, was raising money during these events, and it was great to find out. I found out a little while ago when you told me about the, uh, the cookie. Um, and so I went downtown and watched uh, a scurry of kids running around with their baskets getting cookies. They were so happy. I couldn't believe it. So that was a good thing. I like that kind of event. Um, so I think we still have two surveys going, Nikki. I believe the survey for the library is still going, right? Uh, not the library, uh, the recreation. Okay, great. So go online and you can help out the uh, recreation department and Nikki's effort to make the recreation department more relevant to current needs and fill out a survey. Um, also the RTC, supposedly its survey was ending on the third of this month, but I just checked it and the the link is still active, so if you're interested in um, weighing in on the, um, the, new, the new study that's going on, trying to figure out how we are going to spend our money and what items are important for you in terms of transportation on Highway 1 and other parts of the county. So look for that survey too. Thanks. Thank you. Councilmember Bator. Thank you. I just want to share with the public, I had a, a personal announcement to make. Uh, I had a recent medical diagnosis, and uh, because of that, I'm going to be uh, leaving tomorrow for Seattle for some treatment, and I will be gone until March 26th. So uh, won't see me at a few meetings for a while, but I plan to be back uh, March 26th. So thank you. We look forward to your return. Thanks. All right. Um, well, Council Member Story beat me to it, but I was also going to thank our law enforcement officers uh, here in Capitola and throughout our community and really nationwide for all the work that they do. Uh, we're going to move on to item seven, which is our consent calendar. Uh, the consent calendar is voted on in one motion. Uh, there will be no separate discussion on these items unless a member of the public or city council member would like to request that specific items be discussed for separate review. Uh, items discussed uh, will, or pulled from the agenda, rather, will be uh, discussed following our general government agenda. Uh, so let's start with, is there any member of the council that would like to pull anything from the consent calendar? Nope. Hearing none, is there any member of the public that would like to pull anything from the consent calendar? Seeing none, we will move forward and entertain a motion on consent. Motion to adopt consent calendar. Second. Uh, all right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. We're going to move on to uh, general government and public hearings, item 8A, uh, item regarding lifeguard contracts. Do we have a staff report? It looks like we got to yes, get the system yes. sure. running here. The joys of technology. Good evening, Mayor Peterson, Council Members. Uh, the item before you is the lifeguard contracts for the 2020 season. Um, so some of the background is that we're, we're discussing two different contracts uh, that would cover lifeguard services for the 2020 season. Um, and to begin, 
So in 2012, uh, the city began contracting with Santa Cruz Marine Safety Division uh, to provide the beach lifeguard services at Capitola Beach. And um, since that time, there have been uh, extensions that were authorized it, up until last summer. Um, some years back, CSLSA recommended that the Capitola Junior Guard Program should be trained by a lifeguard agency. And um, in order to address those recommendations, the city worked with a couple of different um, models and last summer uh, contracted with the Central Fire Protection District in order to provide that open water lifeguard training for our junior lifeguard instructors. Uh, this was a very successful model and um, we had been in conversation about a broader partnership with Central Fire, um, but due to the merger with the Aptos La Selva um, station, Central was not able to offer beach lifeguard services for this 2020 season. So um, for this season coming, the 2020 season, uh, lifeguards, the Santa Cruz Marine Safety Division will, uh, is again willing to provide the lifeguard tower services as they have done for the past, since 2012. Um, and again, Central Fire Protection District will conduct um, swim tests in order to determine junior guard applicant eligibility. They will also be providing the open water lifeguard training for the Capitola Junior Guard staff. Um, th and that training does meet or exceed the USLA standard for open water lifeguard saving. <coughs> Excuse me. The proposed contract from Santa Cruz Marine Safety Division is the 91,119. Um, this is a $8,000 increase um, from the previous year's contract that includes an increase in hours as well as personnel costs. The proposed central contract of 12,085, um, this is an unchanged number from the prior year. So the recommendation for you is uh, to authorize the city manager to sign a one-year contract with um, Santa Cruz, the city of Santa Cruz Marine Safety Division for the lifeguard services, um, the beach lifeguard services, as well as authorize city manager to sign a one-year contract with the Central Fire Protection District um, for the lifeguard testing and training services. And I am available for questions at this time. Great, thank you. Any questions from the council? Yes, council yeah, member um, Bertrand. Yeah, um, I just like to understand the agencies that you're referring to, uh, CSLA or so? So what is that um, agent? the and CSLSA is the LSA. California, um, CS, California Surf Lifeguarding Association. Okay. Um, so USLA, which is the national lifeguard, CSLSA is the local um, branch of that and so they, um, are the body that provide professional services and development to lifeguard agencies in California, um, as well as organize the regional competitions or assist in regional competitions um, for this area as part of the national body of the USLA. So when our um, junior guards go to competitions, they're the ones that organize and run that? It is, it, they support that. It's different lifeguard agencies ultimately organize okay. all of the competitions, but the CSLSA is the one that provides um, kind of the professional um, development aspects to lifeguard agencies and the organization for the competitions. Okay, um, a second question, um, you know, your presentation, the cost go up $8,000, right? And you mentioned there that it's increased hours. Uh, are we providing more services to uh, the city of Capitola or junior guards? You said increased hours. So um, previously we had a few hours in the day from the nine o'clock to 11 o'clock hour where we didn't have um, tower services. 
um, because of a different staffing situation. Uh, so in addition to, we had asked the um, city of Santa Cruz to provide that additional tower services so that way we're covered when our, excuse me, when our um, junior guard program, because our junior guard program starts um, at the 8.30 time frame, and so that we would have lifeguard um, services and have our junior guard staff being able to do programs, so that would be two separate. Okay, so our junior guard lifeguards were doing both, but now we're having them more focused. Right. Okay, thank you. Any additional questions? No? Seeing none, we will bring it to public comment. Is there any member of the public that would like to address the council on this item? Seeing none, we will bring it back to council for uh, comment and deliberation. Yes, Council Member Bertrand. Yeah, thank you for keeping on top of this. Uh, junior Guard is very important to Capitola, and I hear very good things about your involvement in this, and keep it up. Definitely have my support. Any additional comments? No, I'll move that we accept staff recommendation. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Uh, item 8B, report on Capitola wharf damage. Do we have a staff report? Yes. You need counsel, give me a minute here. Sorry, we didn't have it up for you. No, it's okay. Excuse me, Council, for not having that ready. No problem. So, uh, similar to the last time we were here uh, in December, we're here talking about an emergency contract, unfortunately. Um, this is damage to uh, Capitola Wharf that occurred. And I'm going to start off with the pictures because they're the best way to describe it. You can see in this picture, taken by our city clerk's husband with his drone is a uh, two pilings that have been broken. They were broken in high surf on January 1st. Uh, you can see that the decking has sagged here. This is about a 10 tons of concrete and a hoist, small boat hoist, that sit there causing us to sag. Um, when this occurred, the wharf was closed immediately and um, we hired an engineer and a contractor to come out and install a steel beam. This is what it looks like today. A steel beam was installed and you can see these, these little tie rods here that are actually picking up and supporting the weight of the crane, the concrete slab, and the wood decking. So that's the condition we're in today. We have a railing around it and the uh, wharf has been reopened. So really quickly, I mentioned most of this. January 1st, the wharf was damaged and closed. Uh, on January 2nd, we met with the engineer and the contractor to evaluate it. Um, the deck under the hoist was still settling. When I was there on January 2nd at 9 in the morning, it had settled about 6 inches. When I was back there at 2 that afternoon, it, was, it had settled another 3 inches. So it was moving quickly, and we de determined that we needed to take immediate action to save the, save the hoist from falling into the ocean. So starting on January 3rd, the contractor installed the beam. He actually had the beam installed and the first set of um, anchors supporting the concrete installed by 6 o'clock on six o'clock in the evening on January 3rd, um, which took most of the weight off of it and stopped the settling from occurring. He then came back, um, so that was a, sat a Friday and a Saturday, and then came back on Tuesday, installed some additional anchors to support the wood structure underneath. That work was completed on January 7th. On the 8th, Public Works installed the safety railing you saw, and today the wharf reopened. We were estimating the cost to date uh, for the contractor is about $25,000. Um, the next steps, obviously, are to replace the broken pilings. That hoist, um, which is a key element to the boat and bait shop business, uh, can't be used, obviously, in the condition it's in. Uh, so we need to get the deck back in at the right elevation and support it on good pilings, so we need to replace the pilings. Unfortunately, when we've lost pilings in the before, we've never had the settlement occur, we, you know, because it's 
usually just the deck boards and structure above it. And so if we get an inch of settlement, that's easy, something we can deal with when we put a new piling in. But because the weight of the hoist and the concrete ballast, we're having a hard time figuring out how to get it jacked up. So if we put a new piling in, we can set it down there. Um, both the engineer and the contractor have come up with multiple options. One is to install some more steel beams that will allow us to jack up the outside of the wharf where the deck is and actually extend the, the, the um, steel out over there and try that. The other one is to see if we can use the broken piles by slip lining a fiberglass pile, which is what we want to go to anyway, over the, the stub, if you will, that's coming out of the, out of the mud and fill that with concrete and then from there jack up the pile. So we're looking at both of those. Um, obviously driving any new pile would require a pile driver. If we go with the slip lining, it's possible that we will not need a pile driver for that. So there's a little cost savings we may see there. It's more of what's afford well not affordable, but what's um, doable in a, in a short time that we're looking at right now. Um, in order to determine if the failed piles can be used for, for slip lining, we need to dive the, uh, and do a dive inspection and see their condition underwater. We're currently working on scheduling that dive inspection. So the recommended actions tonight are to ratify the emergency actions taken to protect the wharf and authorize expenditures from Measure F funding. This is what we did um, with the other emergency project along the beach. Measure F funding uh, is identified for one of the big parts of it and the big biggest part of it is improvements to the wharf um, and there's about $1.2 million in the current uh, rev revenue for Measure F um, that would certainly cover these expenses. And you know, I'll say that certainly whatever we build now, we're going to make sure will fit within the rehabilitation project so we're not rebuilding whatever we do within uh, in the next month or so. Um, we won't need to redo that as part of the rehabilitation project. So, you know, those measure of funds will be spent just a little earlier than the rest of the wharf. Um, but tonight, there, I, I know on the agenda it said we may re be requesting additional emergency actions, but none are required at this time. And certainly we will be bringing any contracts back to the council um, for the uh, final repairs at a later date. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Uh, does council have any questions? Uh, yes. Yeah. Steve, if um, you're unable to use the uh, slip piles um, after you've done the dive, how much, um, well, what's plan B and how much more is, will that cost? So I don't have firm costs yet on any of them, but I suspect um, we know to bring a pile driver out and walk it on our, walk it out on the pier is minimum about of a hundred thousand dollars by the time you mobilize and drive a few piles. Um, we're hoping that if we're able to do the slip lining, um, we will not have to bring out the as heavy a f pile driver. We might be able to do it with a boom truck or something, and I'm anticipating that could be half that cost. Um, that's kind of a guess at this point to be honest with you but that that's kind of what we're the limits we're looking at okay thank you and from, uh, vice mayor brooks <coughs> yeah so steve you mentioned it, the pile driver had to come out and it's, it could be approximately a hundred thousand dollars correct and the project that we have set in two years would we be having a pile driver come out again at the same cost it would cost the same right to bring it out right in two it's years to be again. the same rate to mobilize right. uh, just the we bring a pile driver out, the contractor may choose at that point to bring it out on a barge, which would be a different expense, but it w we'll need a pile driver for that project in any case. Is there any way s of not having to wait the two years and start some of that work earlier s to alleviate some of those costs? Certainly, um, we could look at replacing some of the fi failed piles um, that are on the wharf now and try and replace them at the same time. I think we could um, convince the permittees, the Coastal Commission mainly, that we want to be proactive and, and replace some of the failing piles that have been ad, um, identified as part of our study. Okay. Um, we couldn't do the widening part because that's an expansion of the facility and I don't think we could ever get that done on an emergency, but it's certainly possible that we could replace other piles. Okay, and worth maybe asking for the widening if by chance. I mean, you could always ask, We could try, right? but I... Uh, it would be difficult because we, we, we'd be out of compliance with CEQA and there's a whole host of other agencies yeah. that are involved in the widening project that aren't necessarily for this emergency work. But Okay. Does our city manager need direction from council to move forward with that recommendation to ask 
to add additional work to be done sooner than in this project than waiting the two years? I think our number, so our number one, we will, we will investigate that uh, and, and check what, if we're gonna be bringing the um, pile driver out on scene. Mm -hmm. We will work and just figure out as much of the work as possible that we can do that makes sense. If there's some way that we can avoid double mobilizing, right. absolutely, we will pursue every avenue that we can to do that. I think it's, I think as the public works director said, it not very likely that we could put in the widening project in advance, but we will certainly look into it. Right. Our goal though is, is to slip line at this point the remaining piles, assuming they're in condition. Mm -hmm. We'll find out when we dive. Yeah, I think it's worth asking. Okay, thank you. Yes, Council Member Bertrand. Yeah, I'm not familiar with the structure of the wharf, but the fact that you had significant sagging, um, is there any chance it's former, uh, other damage to the wharf that's been transferred back, I guess, to the bait shop? No, we got lucky in that regard in that the pile caps, which are the stringers that go from pile to pile, pile perpendicular to the, the length of the wharf, um, actually had a joint in them um, about halfway between the, the hoist and the bait shop, so there was no deflection. They, they sagged, but they, they didn't bend, if that makes sense. Okay. They, they, they bent, as, so there is no damage. That's why we're able to reopen the wharf. If, that, if we had been in the other condition, we probably wouldn't have been able to reopen the wharf without that. Gotcha, so it's like cantilevered out, it just yes. bent? Okay, thanks. All right, uh, with <coughs> that, we will bring it to public comment. Is there any member of the public that would like to address the council on this item? Seeing none, we will bring it back to the oh, council. Hold on, hold on. Oh, Willie. Oh, I give Willie. oh my apologies. I, I was so he was <laughs> contemplating. <laughs> my apologies. I was wondering why you were here. <laughs> I'm Willie Case. I own the wharf house out on the end of the wharf. And, uh, actually, the only comments I want to make, I, I want to uh, express my appreciation in the public forum to, uh, to Steve and, and his incredible staff for uh, immediate attention to a, 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 a big need out on the wharf. We opened today, and, and, and that, that's pretty incredible. That's, that's seven days of closure uh, from a rather severe uh, condition. That, uh, and and I, I just I felt like the council should be aware of the great work your staff is doing for you. Thanks, Steve. Thank, Thank you. Willie. Thanks, Willie. All right, with that, we will. Uh, is there any additional member of the public that would like to address the council? Okay. Seeing none, I will bring it back to council for uh, comments and deliberation. Any comments on this item? Yes, council member Bator. Uh, first of all, I think we got really lucky uh, uh, looking at that. I think the fact that the uh, hoist didn't fall into the bay uh, really was very fortunate for us, and I don't know how all those members held together with it, especially that much weight. Um, I'm, I'm gonna be very optimistic that this uh, uh, Overpiling. What, what's the term you call it? Subplaning. Subplaning. Yeah, because that's kind of the plan we are intending for the the new portion of the wharf when we do that. And and uh, if we're able to do that there and then kind of dodge this bullet because that's what we're doing. I think that's great. Um, my only concern is is that should we have to drive piles? I think we're at a point now where we have, in my mind, this council by the document that we kind of authorized for moving with the new wharf is we've got the kind of pile that we want. There, the concrete fiberglass pile that can be expanded to and that should we drive any new piles anywhere on that wharf, they should be that type of pile so that they're the kind we can add on to. I think your hope is that we don't get into that extreme budget right now. I, I think what you're asking us is just for money to authorize the repair for that or are you, are you, are you looking at money now for possible pile driving? No, I, I anticipate we'll come back to you with a contract for, for the addition. Okay, and then that's it. My only concern at this point is, is that uh, should, should any piles need to be driven, we should, we should adhere to that policy of those type of piles. But with that, I'm okay with uh, making a motion to approve staff recommendation. I'll second, but I have a comment. Sure, we have a motion and a second. Uh, continued discussion, Council Member Bertrand. Yeah. Um, so last time I was here, uh, up here at City Council, I did mention to the public at large that it's great when people from the public come here and, you know, thank um, City for all the services that it does. Um, so thank you, Willie, for coming. I really appreciate that. And I encourage other members of the City of Capitola, when you're happy with the City and what it does, please come and let us know. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from Council? 
Uh, all right. Uh, I just want to say briefly, thank you so much to Steve and our, our whole public works crew. You've done an amazing job, as usual. None of us are surprised that there's just like exemplary work coming out of the city and from your department. So thank you so much. And thank please you. pass that on to your Appreciate crew as that. well. Yes. Uh, with that, we have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Uh, motion carries unanimously. Moving on. Item nine, considering items for municipal code title two administration cleanup ordinance, which is why I ran for council in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone asks, I say I just wanted to work on municipal code title two administration cleanup ordinances. Oh. And we're here to, and we're here to do it. Come true. <laughs> oh my I, I can't run it from here, so if you can. I've got it, so got it. give Thank me a high very much. I don't care. Okay, um, as, as the mayor introduced, we have um, a living document of, in the shape of our municipal code and uh, from time to time laws change practices change language changes um, and we need to keep up to date um, within this section uh, there are pieces that fall into that category we have uh, both mandated and language changes we need to make basically overall uh, fairly administrative work but there are three areas before we act bring you an actual ordinance where we would like council direction and feedback. Um, and when we come back with the actual ordinance, there will also be a few other um, pieces that are not from the direction. Uh, the first item is something that council brought up last fall um, regarding how um, the process for removing a planning commissioner. Um, currently, it's a two-step process, um, and as you will recall, in Capitola, we have individually appointed commissioners, um, and should, at this point, a the appointing council member wish to remove his or her commissioner, um, that council member would state that that is their intention, and then a vote would need to take place with support of a majority of the council. So it is the two-step, an announcement by the appointing council member and then a vote by the entire council. Um, we did look at how some other jurisdictions that have a similar uh, individual appointment um, address these. Um, in some cases, um, in addition, um, well, they will simply allow a council member to remove theirs, to, to make the announcement that I plan to remove um, my commissioner and we will, you know, I will be opening recruitment. Um, and they also allow for the greater council, um, someone else on the council to request for the removal of a council member. Um, and then that would come up uh, for a majority vote. Um, another option would be to make it a supermajority vote of four members. So um, it's a, right now we have an and what the current, uh, what the possible recommendations I should say is, is to make it an or um, should the council choose. Um, so that's something that we will want feedback um, on the second item is referrals to an advisory body. Um, this is uh, when some an issue comes up and a council member um, says, we should have traffic and parking look at that. Um, right now there is no process in code for that and we can just keep it that way. Um, but sometimes these are fairly large issues um, somewhat recently has been um, the jewel box traffic that went to traffic and parking turned out that there was really not much that traffic and parking could do it came back it was a lot of time and work um, and so staff wants to know whether the council feels like having an individual make that request is fine and appropriate and we don't need to make any changes or um, if they'd like to have a little more discussion um, on those pieces um, so options are, you know, actually requiring it to be agendized um, or to get a general sense of support for that action. 
and then Be before the we get off I'm sorry before oh, we ahead. get off that one I think one of the points I would emphasize is that I think it's important for council members to understand that when an item gets referred to an advisory body there's a fair amount of work that ends up taking place both on a staff on a staff basis to support that advisory uh, body's discussion and deliberations and research and understanding an issue and in addition work by um, volunteer members in most cases the volunteer members of that advisory body and so the question is is can it just happen with one council member at a meeting saying I'd like them to work on this or is it, does, should it require a vote should we put it on an agenda and have a count regular council action should it be uh, you know with the concurrence of another council member at the meeting that item gets referred so that's why we're bringing this up just because <clears throat> The referrals to uh, advisory bodies they're sort of not insignificant um, actions and the third item that we are looking for feedback on is um, to change language about placing items on the agendas as you well know for yourselves uh, you must do that make those requests <coughs> at a public hearing and say I would like to see this um, come back to the council for discussion our code right now gives more power to a committee chair um, if it is within that jurisdiction um, the chair can simply place an item on the agenda and staff wanted to point that out to the council and see whether um, that is something that you would like to change and, and remove that section um, so um, after I finish up here we will ask you to go th we'll go through each one and uh, get direction on the three items that you were seeking that um, use that to write a new ordinance um, and then it will include as I mentioned other items uh, we have directly quoted old election language that's not what the a state code says anymore um, we have some practices in the appeals process that we just want to clarify that this is how it is done um, we still have the redevelopment agency as a section that can go um, so items like that will also be included as well as the three items that you are giving us direction on tonight so um, I guess we can take them in the order that we had so if you um, like to give us a, a ask excuse me specific questions about any of the three that we've brought forward all right. Uh, does council have any questions? Yes, Council Member uh, I may have a question for the city attorney. Um, my question is, would this be the appropriate time, since we're reviewing this, if we wanted to initiate a policy for removing a mayor? I, I, I think so. It would probably. So we looked into this question, and you don't have to have a procedure for removing a mayor however if at some point you want to remove a mayor you need to do it pursuant to a procedure that you have adopted and so what cities who do not have a procedure on the books do if they want to remove a mayor is they adopt a procedure by resolution prior to removing the mayor and, and that's a tough as you can imagine a like a highly politicized process because you've got a removal pending and so you're adopting a procedure at the time and so it it's a good practice to have a procedure on the books and to negotiate it when you have no intention whatsoever of removing a mayor it's good to have that as a backup if that time should ever come so it, and it would be this would be the point we could do it by resolution but I think it's better practice to do it by ordinance because then 20, 30 years from now when we're all gone, um, the it, the city attorney at the time will not have to dig through, pa and city clerk will not have to dig through past resolutions to find it. And this is probably the ordinance in which it would live. So this is a good time. That's a very long way of saying yes. Well, as, as the mayor said, that she ran for the purpose of cleaning up, and this is a cleanup opportunity <laughs> for us. And I'm thinking if we're going to go through the trouble to generate a policy or procedure for a planning commissioner, it's, it's kind of like we, we did something a while ago where we gave the city council a raise and we didn't give the planning commission a raise and we kind of missed that step and I'm thinking it's these two seem to me to be hand in hand so I would would suggest that we instead of going through three items tonight we go through four and 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 it may end up that the planning commissioner procedure and the mayor procedure 
are identical. I, I, but that's just my, I would like to discuss all four tonight if it's sure. the will of the council. The procedures could certainly be identical. I mean, both planning commissioners and the mayor serve at the pleasure of the council. And so it, essentially the minimum that you need to do or even the maximum that you need to do to remove either is to take a vote. In, in public, obviously, it needs to be a transparent process, but that's all you're required legally. Anything else you can work out. Thank you. My question. Council Member Bertrand. Um, so talking about it in terms of mayor, I, I have no problem talking about that, but we didn't agendize it, so is that an issue? That's a great question. I, I think it's fine here because it, especially if you talk about it as um, – another change that you would like to make to this ordinance because you're it, this is the ordinance in which it would live so not only I think because you talk about this I think if any other council member has any other suggestions of changes that you would like to see to this ordinance now is the time to raise them additional questions from council Okay, seeing none, we will bring it to uh, public. If there's any member of the public that would like to address the council on this item, now would be the time. Seeing none, we'll bring it back to council for comment and deliberation. Uh, who would like, does anyone have any comments? Yes, council member Batorf. Um, well, I, I don't know, do we want to go by, by one by one as Linda suggested and rather do it that way? Like I, I yeah. have a comment on each item, so it, it, no, it, no if, if, if you want, if, 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 if Linda would like the mayor to do would that. Like, yeah. Yes, the mayor yeah. would like. Yes, but I do have questions and yeah, absolutely. Or comments. I have comments. I'm Let's sorry. do a comments and conversation about the first item, the removal of, of commissioners or removal of mayor or however, whatever we want to throw in, in that bucket and uh, as, as appropriate. Okay, then if it's item number one, which is the removal of a planning commissioner, my comments are is that I am okay with the removal of the word and and the insertion of the word or, and I'm fine with three voting members with uh, four present. Ditto. Yes, Vice uh, Mayor Brooks. I would be interested in, um, actually, I agree with Council Member Blautorf with the or, but I think that it might make more sense if it were a super majority for four council members because then it's it's you know it's the one it's one the one person the one council member who made the appointment or the four rest of the group who um, who agree with the removal of that planning commissioner and or mayor I think that makes more sense any additional comments um, so we're doing one vote, correct? But right now we're doing comments on each individual item, but we'll have one vote? I don't even no think vote, you need just a vote. Direction. No, oh. just mm -hmm. direction. Okay. Um, and then we'll bring an ordinance back to you, and then you'll vote on it. Oh, I see. But, but okay. I've heard two yeah. Yeah. So I'd, I'd like to continue to. I, I don't have clear direction yet. Yeah. Here. So, so okay. if we do, if it's you know, if we don't settle on something immediately, then I think a motion would make sense. Okay. Just to give for the, the for the sake of discussion, I'll say that I'm uh, also uh, in agreement with removing the and and putting the or. I also agree with uh, Vice Mayor Brooks that if if it's not the person who appointed that commissioner asking them to be removed, then it should likely be every single other person on the council that believes they should be removed. Um, so that's just my opinion for the sake of discussion. Um, but we have different opinions uh, on the floor, so to speak. As would Council Member Bator for Count, uh, Vice Mayor Brooks like to elaborate uh, any further or, or uh, I bear any additional comments? I think four people have spoken and we haven't heard from one, so I... <laughs> Who no is that? Not, not Who is that one? Ah, well. <laughs> um, okay, I, I, I'm fine with a supermajority, but as I was sitting here thinking, and unfortunately, Ed, you're going to be gone for um, like three months, um, so we would be unable to come with a supermajority during that per period of time. And so if there was something significant issue that the majority of the council felt needed to be acted on, um, then our hands would be tied. Um, so if we can come uh, to a solution to that particular scenario, um, then I'm fine um, with a supermajority. Or if you said that with the remaining uh, council members uh, that are, you know, president serving, that could maybe uh, serve it. So I would just maybe ask for that little amendment. So, so it, w it would be uh, a supermajority of the council members present. 
Councilman Bratzorg, how okay. do you feel about that? Well, a, a super majority of the council members present essentially would say that, that if one person was gone, three would be sufficient to, to carry the vote. And mm -hmm. if, I, I think my concern is, you know, it just just what what backs the movement is, that, you know, I, I think that most of the items we, we um, vote on are by a majority vote of three. We, we're not a seven person council, we're five. So, I mean, I still think that three is a significant number. Um, I'm trying to think, and maybe the city attorney or the city manager can help me. There's, there's certain things that require a supermajority uh, tax measure. Or, 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 or. Urgency ordinances require supermajority. Um, anytime you want to stop debate requires a supermajority. Um, adding an item late to an agenda. Adding an item late to an agenda. I, you know what? I, the, in this position, for the removal of the mayor or the removal of a planning commissioner, it would probably be a contested item. It may be obvious to to two or maybe three. I don't know that you would ever get four, or and because it, you know my, my 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 feeling of how it plays out is that one person who who the way we have this is a person could who who, who had that by my planning commissioner was bad and I wanted to remove him. I would recommend that, and it would probably not reach any opposition. It, but but if, if the council felt that somebody, some planning commissioner, or if, if, the, if the mayor wasn't performing, um, I think three is sufficient. I mean, I, I, I think trying to get a, a c complete unanimous body to support that is probably, uh, you know, it nullifies the going through the process. And I think that we make a lot of big decisions for this city on almost everything else. and. Uh, like I said, I, I, I could be on the losing end of this, but I feel strongly about three votes uh, is, is enough to make a decision in the city. Understandable. Uh, council Member Bertrani. Yeah, so I'm, I'm thinking about how this council would be working, you know, amongst its members. And um, so a supermajority is, is kind of a high hurdle. And to require a high hurdle when there's clearly some dissatisfaction to me is too much of a thing to ask. So if three people on this board realize that there's some difficulty with the commissioner, I think that's enough. Because you want to have a commission that's going to work properly in conjunction with the city council or in terms of the mayor, right? So sometimes high asking for a high hurdle is not going to solve the problem. Thank you. Any additional comments? I'm just thinking out loud to your point, Council Member Botorf, um, about the Brown Act and when how one would be Brown Acted. So we would only have permission to, like, if there was something like this, I'm just trying to play out all scenarios in my mind. The person would only be able to speak to one other person. That would technically still leave. Always. The yeah. So you would still have the three left out of the five it, like it wouldn't benefit that I'm I guess I'm talking in circles here but I'm talking out loud mostly for myself here um, but to so I, I can see how three how three could work because of Brown Act it, it would be in support of that that the council member or the person who was up for discussion would still have the opportunity to speak to somebody else that's still on council. Would they still would have that opportunity, and there would be enough of the rest of the group to make a decision without being impacted by that person. Is what I'm what I'm getting at, you know. So it sounds like, if I'm understanding correctly, and correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, that council members Botorf and Bertrand uh, believe that three of the five council members would be sufficient to remove a planning commissioner or a mayor. I believe that council member Story, if I'm understanding you correctly, believes that as well for the sake of if someone was missing that you would, that three would be sufficient only if someone was missing or three would be sufficient no matter what. Well, I, If you don't mind my asking you to share. No, thank you. Um, I was speaking of uh, if in this instance, which we're really going to experience, if one council member was absent, um, we should redefine what is a supermajority. Mm -hmm. And in that situation, the supermajority would be the three remaining mm -hmm. votes in that case. So, so that was 
the scenario that I was trying to address with this action. Now, on that general question about should you remove a planning commissioner with just three votes, um, I guess I, my tendency would be to agree with uh, Councilwoman Brooks, because removal is a, uh, of a willing, functioning, and working planning commission, removal is a pretty severe um, uh, action to take against somebody. Um, and I think that if we're going to do that, there should be uh, a pretty much consensus. It should be a pretty obvious and serious violation and not just political rancor, uh, which three votes could amount to political rancor. Um, and so, I mean, in my experience, doing that kind of force removal should require, in, in my view, a supermajority. Um, so that's my thought about it. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I think I could live with either scenario uh, if it came to that. But my tendency would be to agree with Councilwoman Brooks that you should have a, a, a vote of four or the super remaining council members to remove uh, a, a working planning commissioner. If, yes. I, if I may add, especially if we're going to be looking at the addition of mayor, I think that uh, the remove the process of removal of mayor, I think that um, you bring up a really excellent point about the the politics that can get involved in something like that and to get a full consensus of the majority at the time makes the most sense for me. One more quick. Yes, please. I, I just want to really take advantage of something Council, <laughs> Councilman Brooks said, which says I was thinking out loud and I love it because what you did is you brought up something I hadn't considered and that is although um, if, if I talked to some other council member and wanted to remove a planning commissioner, I couldn't guarantee that could happen. But you, if you were opposed to it, you could talk to one other person. You could guarantee that action by d by stopping it with the, because of the supermajority law. So it's an advantage to the fact that if you want to stop something, the Brown Act doesn't hurt you. Whereas if you want to take an action, because in, in the in, in to make the action successful, I would not be allowed to talk to two other people. I would have to rely on that open debate and discussion. Whereas you could thwart an issue by having a conversation. That's a really good point. Mm. I wasn't mine. It was uh, uh, Councilmember Brooks. It's what I do, guys. It's what I do. I think out loud. I'm it all out. I'm glad someone. Anyway, I, I think what we need to do is bring it back, and we're obviously going to vote on it. I, 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 we, I don't want to beat it up tonight. I, I, yeah. Yeah. Would I, we, I need, I need you to play that out, though. If, I, if, if the mm -hmm. mayor sure, allows, I, oh, I need you I to play that out comes for me one more time so I can fully comprehend what you're saying. What I just said? Yeah. If myself and Jacques. And, and I wanted to get rid of Kristen, okay? I could talk to Jacques, okay? But but I can't get, I don't know if I have a third vote. Whereas if, if Kristen said, Yvette, throw me out, Vice Mayor, uh, don't get me removed, you've just thwarted the action because you two can talk. And because of the super majority rule, even though I get Sam to vote with me, it doesn't happen because you two have created an alliance. I got you. So the Brown Act favors you and it doesn't help me. Is that bro me out? Is that what, <laughs> is that what we do? <laughs> That's how we talk, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay. right. I'm sorry. No, I mean, at this point. Beautiful skill. <laughs> I love the, the role playing. I, I think we all understand the situation now. Um, I think at this point we have enough direction to prepare an ordinance. Obviously, it'll be the source of more debate, and obviously we can tweak it, uh, make it a super majority or just a majority. That change can be made at the hearing. So, okay. Okay. yes. Uh, uh, since Council Member Chad. Yeah. yeah. Since it's, um, recommendations for an ordinance. I like to separate uh, advisory committees, like FAC and, and planning, from the mayor. So I think uh, we should uh, have a proposed ordinance that deals with one, the mayor in one sense, and then the other commissioners in, in a different sense. Are you jumping topics on us? These no, are all, this, this is, is all in one ordinance, correct? This is all in one ordinance, right. Yes. But you just in want separate words, a separate different paragraph or clause or line. So you mean a different, uh, paragraph or however it's delineated yes, right. for yeah, a different procedure or different discussion for removing the mayor versus removing a planning commissioner yeah, separate out these issues so I, oh. I was actually going to raise that as well I think that's a good point oh. you could have separate procedures right you could have a supermajority for one and not for the other if the council wants to yeah just to complicate things further for Better you guys lively <laughs> discussion okay. right. 
We can discuss it at the next you're meeting. Al you're, okay. You are always allowed to talk aloud. Oh, I okay. appreciate that. Is the council satisfied with uh, with what we've discussed and that the staff believes it has uh, adequate? We're good? Okay. We're yeah. kicking it down the road. <laughs> <laughs> well, now it's got to come out for, they're going to prepare an uh, uh, you know, option for us. And then you when we have something specific to debate, <laughs> then we'll, it'll come it's back. It's pretty specific already. Yeah. <laughs> Three or four. All right. Uh, we're moving on to the uh, number two within this, referring items to an advisory body. Uh, so as mentioned by city clerk, either um, we require that it be an agendized item and a council majority or a council member can make a referral at a council meeting with the concurrence of one or two other members, correct? Or we remain silent. As or we is. remain silent. Uh, comments on this, council member Bator. Uh, I think that uh, if someone want, if I want to say I want to recommend something to the parking commission, I should, uh, I should require a second. Someone should, there should be a second vote to to, uh, to, to generate that. So, so one of us just doesn't um, generate that action. It wouldn't be a vote; it would just need a second. Okay. So, um, a little counter to that: um, when someone comes up with an idea, it may not be obvious at first why that is a good idea. You know. And it will take some work to do a proper presentation so that you have enough to make a decision. So I have no problem asking staff to put that work out before the various commissions or before us so that we have something to think about mm -hmm. and come up with a discussion. So I think one person's enough. Um, you may be lucky enough to convince someone if you do it ahead of time. So that's another way to look at it. Uh, council member story thank you um, well I guess I, I want to reflect back because in a recent meeting <laughs> and this is probably why this came up uh, no. I had yeah <laughs> yeah that's what they say now but let me, I and what that item was there was a person here at the podium huh. talking about uh, gas powered leaf blowers um, oh, and, 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 and I made the referral and asked that it be referred to the Commission on the Environment to study it, okay? Um, now, in doing that, my expectation was staff would take the item, they would go to the Commission on the Environment, the Commission on the Environment may say, we don't want to do this, this is too much work. Um, and staff may concur with that. And then a report would come back and there would be an explanation at that time about where that item is going and maybe why it can't move forward in that body. And then we would have a, a deliberative process uh, which would take probably a majority to move any further. So um, I think it's okay for any one of us to be able to say, can we just refer this to one of our advisory bodies without it become having to be a, a politically supported item, which then becomes almost more of a mandate to that body that they feel like, well, they have to move forward and tackle this item because now two council members have weighed in on it. And to me, it's just a, it, it's an opportunity to address a citizen um, and to refer an item that we may not have enough information on to in bring in more stakeholders and community members. And my, uh, it very well be that at the initial meeting that that com committee may say, we cannot do this. This is just above our pay grade. We get paid nothing. Uh, <laughs> and so, and then bring that back. And then we have to decide at that point, well, do we drop it or do we are going to move forward with it? And I don't know requiring, and the reason why you explained, Jimmy, why you maybe wanted to have additional council members weigh in, I don't know how that addresses your issue. Because, you know, two people could chime in, but then you got the same issue at that committee level. They s may still say, we, this is too much work, we can't do this, and those assessments. And so, I think it, I mean, I'm, I've used it and I would like to be able to continue to use it without having to depend upon other council members uh, just to have that initial introduction. Um, 
Now, if there's going to be anything more than that, then yes, I think there should be more of us weighing in before too much staff and city resources get used on a particular topic. Um, so that's my sense of it. I think it's I think it's okay. I don't know how it creates a problem or how the alternative would solve the problem. So, Vice Mayor Brooks, from our normal practice, if we were want if we wanted to put something on the agenda, we would look at staff and say we'd like to put this on the the agenda, or we would like for you to further explore this option, or X, Y, and Z. Is that correct? So in a so just in to be clear, we're not talking about the council agenda. No, uh, we're talking about referring to a commission, to committees and commissions, right? Right. Okay. So if somebody were to come up and say, you know, I'm interested in doing this, instead of the, I mean, this is the scenario. Instead of me saying to that person specifically, this is the action that's going to be taken. I'm thinking it's more a play on words, right? That I, I'm, I feel like this is a get. We're getting mixed up on on the process where instead we could just say directly to you, to staff, could we explore a, putting this item, or can we look to see if this particular board or advisory committee can take this on? Staff, can you look further into this? Is that different than what you're saying, Council Member Story? Could so, so let me, let me, first off, I just want to say it's that. It's not different, right? Yeah. So we still, at the will of Council, can I mean, we get to do that with any agenda item. At the beginning, we can say to staff, we like you to do X, Y, or Z, right? So, sort of. The Brown Act articulates a few things that council members can do in a meeting um, about items that are not agendized. You can ask staff for a report at a later, at a subsequent meeting on a particular issue and you can ask staff to put an item on the agenda. Asking to have an item referred to a committee is not specifically articulated in the Brown Act as something that the council can do. So what you seem to be contemplating is, it, and it, I, I'm not sure if I'm capturing this correctly, but could you just say to the city manager, figure out this issue and report back to us? That is well within the Brown Act, yes, you can do that. Um, we have decided, I have decided my read of the Brown Act is that y you can say at a meeting, I would like something referred to a committee. Mm -hmm. The question is really about, you know, referring something to a committee arguably uses more staff resources than referring it back to the council because then you're just using your council and there's a staff report but it's just the staff. I'm kind of merging into your territory here, but it's really just the staff preparing that report. Whereas a committee, they may spend months working on something to get it. So to have one council member requesting that is, it's really about, a, it's really a resources issue more than anything. And, and what would the difference between, I mean, in the recommendations presented in the staff report, it says, and require a council majority. How would that benefit? Did we pass the questions part already? May I ask a question? No, no is that okay? You can ask a okay. question during comments. Here. Okay. Um, how would that benefit the staff? How would that support the staff? You know that you would get the council majority. So what's What's the difference there? So, so a couple of things. First off, I, I want to make it clear to Council Member Story, this wasn't just about the, <laughs> the leaf floor. <laughs> it was the most recent example, um, but there's been a there's been a trend of this, and and actually, um, actually, the, the most the most significant situation like this came about with the Jewel Box traffic comment. Yeah. And frankly, there was a community group that came up to public comment, and it got referred to the Traffic and Parking Commission, who went and then spent. <coughs> literally months working on things, doing studies, counting cars, developing all kinds of big alternatives, and then, and then it came back to the council who concluded that there really was no great solution, and at that point, there'd been so much work done, it was, it was a challenge. So the issue here really is about, I think the city attorney articulated it pretty well, is about an individual council basically from the dais creating this work item. And it's fine, it hasn't been a terribly big problem, but I've seen it happen a number of times and then I saw it go pretty wrong that once 
and I've realized that it's kind of a weakness we have in our system. So the alternative to answer your question, Councilwoman Brooks, the, the first bullet there would be basically, rather than saying, I would like issue X to go to committee Y as an individual, you'd say, Mr. City Manager, can you please put on the next agenda an item to refer this to a commission? And then the next committee, the next city council agenda would have, we've had a request to refer, refer a potential leaf blower ordinance to the Commission on the Environment. Here's a little background on leaf blower ordinances. Here's about how much estimated time that it would take place. The full council would consider it and say, thumbs up or thumbs down, something we wanna do or not. So that would be that first bullet point. The second bullet point is kind of this in-between thing where an individual council member could, in response to something somebody was saying from the public, in public comment, I think this would be a great item for Commission X to work on. Does anyone else agree? And then with the uh, concurrence of one or two others, it would get referred to a commission. So those are the yeah. two differences. And either situation just provides either more information before the decision's made in the first example mm -hmm. and a full council majority, or in the second example, just more than one council member sort of sending the city off on this path. Thank, thank you, I, and I would agree that y you weren't the only one, Sam. I too <laughs> have done this about the plastics situation. And one thing that's come up, at least for me, is the, the follow-up. And by agendizing something like that, holds staff more accountable to, to doing that follow-up versus me saying, hey, Jamie, or hey, city manager, do you remember that I brought this up at city, at?" public comment and I asked for this and and so I've kind of run into that scenario where since it hasn't been agendized it's kind of been the circular thing so I could see how it holds everyone more accountable with um, option one. Councilmember Boxer if you had a comment. Yeah, thank you. you know, I, I wanted to bring up another case because I had one also Sam you remember when we were doing the Arts Commission and we we're doing the banners in the I village and I said well why don't we refer that to the Arts Commission and we and, <coughs> the, and the thing that came out of that was is you were protecting the Arts Commission because, you know, as Jamie's doing, you didn't want to overburden them with a, you know, with a one-person request. And that's why I come from the position where, like, I don't think one person on the council should dictate any action we take. I think the only way we learned that was we learned last year that uh, if the mayor wants to call a special meeting, he can do that. But, but, but other than that, it takes a couple of us to, to do something. So that's why my suggestion was that we do two things, two people to do that. But I think going with uh, Council Member Brooks's theory, it's probably better in the long run if we say, can we agendize that? Because we all have the right to agendize something. That's already in our game. We say, can we agendize that for possible recommendation to a commission? And then it comes back and then we have the discussion. So I'm actually okay with either one. But I was trying to just get away from any one of us just dictating, send that to the Arts Commission, okay? Because we had a lively discussion and then you know, we, every, one, every one of us, so, I, so I, I think we all carry a little bit of the, the, the city manager's ire as far as just randomly pointing out commissions to do stuff so um and i'm okay with either one of those and if it if the com if the council feels it's better that we use our our in our policy we already have where we are allowed to put something in the agenda and agenda i said i could live with either one so add a little bit here so if we're recommending or we are proposing to recommend to a committee um have them be part of that process to determine if this is something for them to work on. So I have no problem with saying if we really want to agendize it, more than two people, I could go along with that. But I'd like to hear from the committee whether they think it's a thing that they would like to actually work on. Does it really fit into their scheme of how to approach things? And I'll tell you why. So. It'll come up in our next part of this discussion in terms of the chair of those committees agendizing things. So I've been on the, um, I won't be on the FAC anymore, but I've been on the FAC for over 12 years. And one of the things mm -hmm. that keeps coming up is we can't do anything unless we get it from city council. But there are things that have come up in that 12 years of discussion that seem like reasonable things you know, and so how do we get it on our agenda, agenda so we could act on it? So you could go to the city council person and go that route too. So there's, I believe, um, a willingness to be part of that discussion to see if it's a good item to discuss from that committee. And so if we throw something to them, I think having whatever committee that is be part of that discussion would be a good thing. 
So I could see what you're saying, not a lot of work on staff, but have something that goes to the commission. Uh, the commission wants to be involved. They want to uh, focus on this thing which they volunteered to do. So to have them be a part of that discussion, I think is a good thing. And I think that sort of came up with the art and cultural, okay? So um, I have no problem with the two people from city council to actually agendize something to a committee. But if we say we'd kind of like to see if they would like that, and we ask staff to come back, I'd like to have that commission get a, a, a take on that. You know, some sort of say, do we want to discuss this? Do we feel this is a reasonable thing for our committee to do? And a little bit about the jewel box thing. Um, even though it was a long and laborious process to figure out what to do in the jewel box, that, that process, I think we learned a lot. And if we hadn't involved the people in the jewel box and we had just sort of run with it, I think it would have been a minor revolt. You know, there were some problems. Obviously, there was a lot of people that were, were upset, but in the end, that whole process, I think, came up with something that worked. Um, I think people were a lot happier with the results because they were involved, you know, and sometimes that's what makes these things work, is the fact that you actually go to the student street and get them involved, even though it takes a little bit extra work. In the end, we want something that large portions of our citizenry are acceptable. They're acceptable because they were part of the process. They might be acceptable because it answers their particular issues, but in the long run, I think it spreads it out and the whole system works. Uh, if, I, if I may um, throw out an option for council to consider, we could do both and say that a council member, uh, excuse me, concurrence of two council members is required to send a ref to refer something to committee. And if someone suggests that, he doesn't get that second, they could simply say, then I would like to see it come in a future agenda. I like that. <laughs> any thoughts, well, we any thoughts that. on we that? We can do that currently. Well, no, if you, if was, she was saying that if he gets the second, then it would go to the commission. But if it doesn't get the second, then we would have what we already that already exists, which is right. we can put it on the agenda. But but if you if you like if you came up and you said the leaf floor thing and you said uh, I'd like to recommend that, can I get a second? One of us might have said I might have said I'll second that because mm -hmm. it, it it made to me that request made sense. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying yeah. that night. And yeah. what Chris and I, what the mayor is saying, I believe, is that. If, if, you, if all of a sudden you throw it and you hear crickets, okay, <laughs> you can just look at the city manager and say, I'd like to put that on a future agenda. And, and then we all win, it just takes a little bit longer. Then, so yeah, then there's an opportunity for, for debate and an actual vote on whether or not that should be done. I can understand if you say, I'd like this to go to a committee and you don't get a second, it seems like it would be dead. However, if you don't get a second and then it comes back on an agenda and there's itemized opportunity to explain why and um, a formal vote, um, so I'm, that's just an option that occurred to me as something for conversation. Yeah. Well, if I'm, I, that's, I mean, we already have the ability to agendize at a meeting mm -hmm. or a future meeting. So, um, but with two I votes then you could do it right away to, if, if you came up and said, if that guy's at the podium and you said, I'd like to send that to the commission on the environment, can I get a second? And if I would have said, I'll second that, then it doesn't go to the, it, 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 it happens immediately. Mm -hmm. To the commission. Well, I, I think well, that's but to say that's the that's process, that's right? Why don't we have well, options? I, I just, what I, well, what I, I mean, just, <laughs> what I think is good about just a referral process, it, it's uh, a way to engage our volunteer committee members uh, without a high-level council direction and letting them make the decision about whether it's appropriate or not. And then coming back in coordination with staff uh, to either say, I mean, to reject it and where then it dies uh, or to have a plan of action. Uh, in order to move forward, which would then require, would have to be agendized, would require council majority. So I think the, the ability just to refer something, it kind of relieves a little political community pressure on taking some immediate steps to address 
an issue that uh, one of our neighbors may have. And it may be something that we yet do not have enough information to decide whether it's even appropriate to have staff put on an agenda uh, because those are pretty high level discussions, at least I would hope they are, and would require a lot of preliminary research. Whereas this is just a referral and I think, as the city attorney said, it's about resource allocation and using uh, them at, at whenever at the lowest level to make a, uh, an efficient determination about whether we even have the ability to move forward on a particular issue. And so, I mean, with that, I, I mean, and, and maybe it should be more than one, but if we have the concurrence of two council members, just to make a referral. And to me, that does not mean any, there's not an, a, um, a instruction or an assistance upon that advisory committee to actually take that ball and run with it. It's just asking them, look, is this an issue that you think you are interested in, fits within your um, uh, purpose, um, and you have the ability to follow through with? answer those questions and then come back to us. And if they say no, then I think that, yeah, then we have to as a majority, before it goes any further, there has to be a majority here to make that happen um, one way or the other. And so, so that's what, that's just my thought about it. Um, and, um, but so I, I think the second option on that, on that um, would be fine. Council member story if I'm understanding correctly and maybe this is just a matter of wording that we need to reconsider is that what you're suggesting is that a request for a committee to consider taking up an item t would require only one council member no 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 that that's the second option is that in order to make a referral and to me a request and a referral are synonymous okay, okay? requires yeah. uh, this would take two at least two council members to make happen. So no one of us could do it, but if you had a concurrence of one other council member, at least becomes a referral for them to, for the staff to bring to them and say, is this something that you feel that you could do? Because that was the question that we were discussing about the Arts Commission. All I was asking is that it be a request to them, which they embraced. They took it on. Okay, and so um, to me, that's what the referral would do. But I'm saying I agree. Let's have it be at least two council members before even that happens. Okay, I, I, I think I, I fundamentally I understand what you're saying, and and because of that, I think I disagree with you. Okay, okay. because well, this is what came back to the last thing. Is my position right now, unfortunately, is that I believe I'm an elected official, and I believe that that attorney over there and that city manager served at the will of this council. And I believe that those bodies serve at the will of the council. That's why we, that's why they are on these bodies. And, and I think what we got into last time is you felt that I needed to ask the planning commission if they would like to take this on. And I was put off by that. I mean, I, I'll say it straight out. I, you know, I, those bodies are here. The FAC, the parking commission, they're here to assist the city council. And if we have a group of people, and I'm saying not just one, but two, I don't want to ask them to do that. I, you know, I'm, this is, they're here to serve us. And if we say this is something the council needs, we have two council members that feel this is important for you to look into this and this is what you do. So I think, and what I want to say is I, I'm thinking I fundamentally disagree with you because you want to make it a referral or request. And I'm saying, I think it should take two. I don't think any one person should dictate anything, but I have two people say that, a, 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 that the parking commission or the planning commission, not the planning, but the parking or the commission on the environment, or the finance committee should look at something, then it should be done. And that's me. I just want to make sure that, that, that everybody understands why you and I, right, well, you and I right. are, are different on this item. And, and just maybe to respond to that uh, quickly, Ed, because um, I think you and I want the same thing, okay? And for me, it's just a question of bandwidth and capacity. Are you sending it to the right people in the right place? Um, and if you don't have a willingness, I don't think you're going to get a good result. And so you might as well start there about asking about what they feel, their own self-assessment about their ability to do that. 
that's all I'm saying. And but I get your point too. But I think that you should always assess before you impose. That's it. And so I'll leave it at that. Okay. Uh, Council uh, Vice Mayor Brooks and then Council Member Breton. And w and hearing the both of you speak, I that's why I ultimately feel that option one would really balance that out, requiring that a referring issue to an advisory committee be an agendized item. I don't know that I would want at that moment in time when someone comes up to say, oh, does, what does everyone think right now? Because we don't have that kind of information at our fingertips. What I would like to do is say to staff, hey, can you look into this? Is this an option for our environmental committee? Can you look into it, give them a call, see if this works out for them, and put it on the agenda or report back to me to um, report back to the council if this is something that they can take on. I, I think that's how we can get to to both to to get what we want is by by um, with option one. I think it's it, it, the agendized item. It might not necessarily be an agendized item, right? It would could possibly be well the the environmental committee reported back and said they can't take this on right now because they've got 15 other things. But you could report back to us at the next meeting. Um, so I don't know if we could adjust the language just to say requiring that a referring issue to advisory committees be um, X, Y, and Z or be a request to staff for future comment or for future, for as a future agendized item or slash discussion item or something like that. Because it's hard to say that an agendized item, well, I guess agendized item doesn't have to necessarily be an action item, right? So you could certainly agendize an, ad an item and take and no action. action. I mean, it could right. be a discussion of leaf blowers. We'll use that as an yeah. example. I, I do think, so there seems to be a disagreement about the role of committees between Council Member Batorf and Council Member <laughs> Story. It, one thing you might think about is to, if, if you are interested in, if there's ever a time where you would like to resolve that issue on a case-by-case -case basis, for instance, if there's some issue that one council member may feel is somewhat important to have an advisory committee look at, but if the advisory committee doesn't have time, that's fine, no big deal, versus another issue where all three, four, five of you may feel like this is absolutely something that needs to go to a committee, that is not something that you can resolve without the matter being on the agenda. You can't, if someone comes up in public comment and says this is an issue, and then one council member says this should go to a committee, that's about the extent of the comment that you can make without the item being on the agenda. So if you're interested, it, there does seem to be a split about what a committee's role is. If that is something that you'll think you want to resolve, on a case-by-case -case basis, you, you will need to agendize the item. So, let see if I can help a little bit. From, from my standpoint, as city manager, I think the number one thing behind this is that the act of referring an item to a committee um, generally involves a lot of resources, more than in general an item, just bringing an item to the city council, <coughs> just because Committees often will ask a lot of questions. There'll be follow-up meetings with the groups. They may volunteer to do counts, things like that. It generally can turn, it doesn't always, but it can, it, it certainly has the potential to turn into quite a work item. Um, I think I think about these two options sort of as number one is, is kind of the most bureaucratic and the most strategic. It's like, it's kind of nice to be able to deal with, I think as Council Member Story said, somebody's at the podium and we just resolve it. We say, yep. Go work with the Traffic and Parking Commission. It's a nice solution. It's not very strategic and it's a bit reactionary at times. The second alternative is more responsive and we can deal with something and we don't have to be really bureaucratic. It gets it moving and it sends it to a place. But at times, particularly if it's, if it's just one council member, it can be, it's not super strategic. There's not necessarily a lot of analysis done of like, is this even a thing we can do? Can we even regulate leaf blowers? You know, that, those kinds of fundamental questions aren't answered. So that's the way I differentiate those two options is the first one is, is more bureaucratic, more strategic, and the second one is more responsive and moving quickly. And 
To go back to Vice Mayor Brooks' question, one of the um, items that may come out of an agendized item, if the agenda item is bring back a discussion for us about leaf blowers, and one of the options may be to refer the item to a committee, something that may come out of that meeting instead of a referral to a committee might be we can't regulate that we can, i think we probably can't regulate leaf blowers actually i'm sure we can regulate leaf blowers so that is just an example hypothetical. it's a hypothetical um but it just it, it would give it gives having staff come back to you first does give the council the opportunity to consider options other than something going to a committee including it not going to a committee and it holds all of you all of us more accountable to follow up if I may, I believe Council Member Bertrand was waiting to speak. Do you still have comments? Um, I do. <laughs> but it's more in the vein of Yvette, you know, sort of thinking out loud. And I, I think we have some discretion in terms of what we ask our committee members to do. So I think um, Sam brought up that it could help us in a tight situation, like a political situation. Um, in the fact, I've realized that sometimes an issue may be difficult to bring up, like are we going to impose some kind of tax or are we going to impose some kind of user fee? You know, it may be hard to get those out in the open, but maybe the fact could enumerate these things. Um, a finance director could look at other examples in various cities and stuff like that. And these could be put on the table. It wouldn't necessarily be we recommend that this would be the case that city council would adopt, but we are putting these on the table for you to consider as, as options. Um, I like the idea of going to our com various commissions to do some of the groundwork, not necessarily the deep dig. So not putting city staff in the situation of having to spend hours and hours and hours on something, but to do the first look, the first approach to how someone would approach this particular problem and then come back to us. And then we could say to staff, we want to have this done in terms of a deep dive, come up with some possible resolutions or scenarios. What's, what's it like in other cities and stuff like that. So I think the commissions, depending on what we ask of them, so it's not like just give it to that commission. So I think it's incumbent upon us to be responsible in what we ask of that commission. And that would set the stage for what kind of work would be done in the commission level or what kind of work would be done on the staff level in conjunction with supporting the commission. So maybe a way to phrase this particular change is how we would phrase the request to a commission, okay? So on some level, it could be more detailed, and so we have to have two votes. On another level, it could be have a discussion on this and give us some recommendations of some ideas that you think are worthwhile discussing, and then we take it from there. Now, that might seem a little more complicated, but it allows us to have more options in terms of how we refer things to committees. Um. If I may, I, in listening, there there's some points that came up that I um, I think are really important. And one was uh, one that I thought of was if it only takes one person to put something on a future agenda, and it comes off of, for example, public comment, we may find ourselves in a situation where every person that comes up to the podium is expecting that what they have an issue with will be sent to a committee because they've seen it happen before, and that is a concern um, of mine. We get a lot of emails. We get a lot of calls. We get a lot of people that come here with different concerns. And so it is a concern of mine that every person that comes to the podium will say, well, you sent that leaf blower thing to the environment. Why won't you send my concern about graffiti to the Art and Cultural Commission? And then we're going to have to be in a, in a position to defend each of our individual decisions or, or choices to or not to send something to a committee. Um, another thing that I think is really important is Vice Mayor Brooks mentioned having an agenda report uh, come back to us with additional information is something that I hadn't considered that I think would be really important. Someone could come to us and say, we want to, uh, why, what's up with the leaf blowers? And we say, send that to the environment committee. When in fact, all we may just need a staff report that comes back and go, hey, here's how we can regulate leaf blowers. Here's how we can't. Um, and if at the end of that discussion, we realize, oh, well, we're still at, a, at an impasse. I think at that point, we would have a vote. 
on on sending something to an advisory committee rather than than just a suggestion. Um, I can certainly understand and respect both the idea that we're requesting a, a committee to review something. I think it's important to uh, to request and not demand. At the same time, I can also understand that we are appointing the people in these committees to do these exact these exact uh, jobs. So um, personally, I, I feel that um, at at this point, I feel personally that the requiring uh, an agendized item for a future vote for something to go to um, a committee would be beneficial because it's possible that once we get that agendized item on uh, in front of us at a meeting, we'll realize it never needed to go to, an, to a committee, that we have the answers, that it's already in our code, that our uh, highly uh, skilled and educated staff already has the answer for us. Um, so that's my, my comment at this time and we'll continue discussion. If you're with bullet one, I concur. Okay. Can, I, you, can I make a motion? Um, we're not we're looking giving, for, or do you want to direct them direction? Staff? We're not we're not voting. Do you need a motion for well, one or the other to be put are on you the? Because you have a split council here. At this point, I would I would like to see if we can get uh, three votes for one of the options. So is it appropriate to call for a vote in a time like oh, this sure. when we've got a split? Okay. Yes. I'll vote. Okay. Let's go ahead and and call for um, a motion. I guess we would need a motion yep. first. Okay. I'll make a motion. Um, with option one requiring that referring issues to an advisory committee be an agendized item and require a council majority. Second. Okay, let's do a roll call vote for this. Council member Story. No. Council member Brooks. Yes. Council member Botworth. Aye. Council member Bertrand. No. And Mayor Peterson. Aye. We have direction okay. through Next. All right. Uh, the third item on, or the third issue on item uh, 8C is placing item on agenda. So previ previously it was um, an issue of us sending matters to committees. Uh, right now we're, we're considering if chairs of advisory bodies can send matters to us um, without any additional action. Is that correct? Uh, comments. Councilmember Botorf. I don't want to see any count committees <laughs> putting things on the agenda. Okay. Further comments. Councilmember Bertrand. Um, I have no problem. Um, we've chosen these people to act in these particular capacities, whether it's finance, environment, um, art and cultural, and to me that says we're asking them to come up with ideas within that purview, that very restricted purview. That doesn't mean we have to act on them, but for them to come up with ideas that might be of interest to us, I think is a good thing. And to forward those to the city council, which may take that as an item to agendize or not agendize is fine with me. Well, um, no, no, that's more odd. They're saying they can agendize an item. That's okay, different. so this is the way I read this. The way I read it, because I think the city manager can clarify. Okay. So, but this is the way I read it, okay? Not agendized for city council, but agendized for that committee. No, to agendize for city council. Okay. Yeah. They can put items on our agenda. Okay, so I read it wrong. They have a different opinion now. Yeah, I'll agree with that one. Okay, I have a question. comments, Vice Mayor Brooks. I just have a question. So if, I'm just thinking of a scenario, if this were a FAC, or our FAC committee, and they were working on something and they have a recommendation to bring forward a new tax or something like that, how would that take place? How, what would be the next steps for them if they didn't have permission to do so? They would talk to the city manager. Well, both the mayor and the vice mayor sit on that commission. Yeah. Okay, so what's, so another, what's another committee that I can use a, as an, an example? On the environment. Okay, so the env um, commission on the environment just have been working on the plastics ordinance, want to do updates, want to bring it to council for the ordinance to be updated. How would they do that? So the process would mean that the staff person for the Commission on the Environment would basically come into my office and say, hey, the update on plastics is ready to go to council. So could the code, instead of saying no, you can't put those, like instead of saying no, should it be more open to say the process is that the staff that sit on, you know, have the permission to bring things forward to council. Because it just sounds really stringent.
to not be allowed to, it sounds almost like you're not allowed to bring anything forward the way I'm reading it. And can, well, I mean, just couldn't the advisory chair come to a council member and say, we want, yeah, I want this yes. on the agenda. There's a and lot the of council different ways. Says, yeah, really, all it, it says is that, the, that yeah. the, the chairperson can't put something well, on the right, agenda. You're right, they can't do it themselves, but. There's they a lot of different, that's they what they're can, asking us. That's why right, I said yeah, adamantly yeah. no, but if yeah. they ask. There's if, many if other ways. There is someone right. on that commission, all they do is say, uh, when you're on the fact, can you put this on the negotiation? Yeah. Well, I just want them that there's a clear process for them. There's a lot of different processes. Without the staff being the sole gatekeepers of about what comes on the agenda. They could come to us, the advisory committee could come to us direct. Any council member so could put anything on any agenda. That's right. That's how it's been working for years. Yeah, but not Pretty a much. committee but not member. This. Yeah. Right. Not a committee. Pardon Chairman. me, I wasn't done with my question. Um, the, so my, my question is, what is in the current ordinance? Does it say no or, or yes, that they can or cannot? Is there any language about that? Right there. That's it. The current That's code the requires language. a council member to place an item on a future agenda item requesting at a public meeting. But aren't we talking about the chair? No, that says no, current code requires two. council members. Council yeah. members can. Oh, okay. So this is, it says the following shall have the authority to place a matter on a council agenda. The mayor or any member of the council uh -huh. with the condition that the proposed agenda item be requested at an open city council meeting. Okay. The city manager. The city council may, after the 72 hour posting, add items in the manner provided in the government code. Um, That's emergency. And then it says the chair of a border commission. And so what you're presenting today is to strike that through. Yeah, I mean. And it hasn't been an issue in the past. It hasn't been an issue in the past, no. but but I think as, I mean, it's, it's just a little bit funny that there's more authority for a border commission chair than there is for individual council members. That's sure. the thing that's just, we've noticed. <laughs> That's, all, that's yeah. my question. Can we go back to the slide that had the, can we go back to the blue slide? The easy slide. <laughs> the easy slide, yeah. <laughs> Not all that code. I, I want big letters and small <laughs> paragraphs. Um, how about, um, what, what does the council think about something like chairs of an advisory body may add something to a council agenda upon approval of city manager or a city council member? What, isn't that what we're doing? It's complicated. No, we're trying to. What we're doing. Oh, we just want to get rid of. What it. we're doing is cleaning up language as with the mayor. So, so if we strike that all together, okay, I see yeah, what you're yeah. saying. We they could strike it all together, it. and they would still have the right to come through a council member or city manager. Yeah. Like they absolutely sure. do at every commission meeting. Like they already do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's a cleanup. Is all. Is do we agree to that? To just strike that all together? I would like yeah. to make a motion that we strike the language allowing a committee chairman to put something on the agenda. Motion to go to strike. Oh, excuse me. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? That motion carries. We have made it through item 8C. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Woo. I feel like it's budget time. That was okay. <laughs> Good deliberation, though, everyone. It was. I love you talking out loud. <laughs> and, and, you know, we didn't bring some of the other more ministerial items. Maybe we should have about, you know, the time and place of council meetings. <laughs> We'll have another crack at it next meeting. <laughs> Should I call a special meeting for that to happen? No, no? no. I think okay. we can we can knock it all out in the next okay. meeting. Just kidding. Okay, thank you. We're gonna move on to uh, item 8D, annual donations report. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, this is the fiscal year 2019, or I'm sorry, fiscal year 1819 annual donations report. Um, first, I'd like to just point out that the city of Capitola benefits greatly from the generosity of individuals, local businesses, nonprofits, as well as others in the community. Um, and in July of 2013, the city implemented a donations policy, and that policy basically gives the authority to the city manager to accept grants of $5,000 or less and appropriate those for already pre-approved projects and programs, and it also established a procedure for acknowledging and reporting donations. So as far as uh, fiscal year 1819, the uh, city received a little over $447,000 in donations and grants. Um, 68, a little over 68,000 of that was uh, donations from individuals of $5,000 or less. I have a list up there. I don't want to read the slide to you, but I thought it was important to, it's in the staff report and for the folks at, at home to at least see the, uh, not so much the dollar amounts, but the types of programs that get grant funded and the folks that are um, doing that so you can see some of the, the um, like 
movies at the beach and um, Twilight concerts and Sunday art and music and then those folks that are uh, contributing to those or donating to those programs. Um, and then as far as Twilight concerts, I wanted to pull that one out because there's a number of businesses down in the village and throughout Capitola that contribute to that. And without those donations, those Twilight concerts wouldn't possibly take place or a lot less of them might take place. Um, also last year, we received a little over $154,000 in state and federal grants. Um, and I have those listed up there. Again, I don't want to read the slide, but I thought it was important to at least um, list up there what the grants are for and how we got them or which entity we got them from. And finally, um, this report's basically focused on the $5,000 or less, but I did, we do have, um, we can take donations of greater than 5,000 if we have an agreement with an, any entity. And right now we have one of those agreements with Friends of the Capitola Library. And um, they contributed $225,000 they had over at the Santa Cruz uh, County Community Foundation, which brings their total, I just uh, went through what we had received through yesterday and we're sitting right at about $525,000 in donations and um, pledges. So we've received 475 and we have pledged for another 50. My understanding is there's some other um, commitments that have been made to the friends that are gonna push that number probably north of 600,000. So a very successful um, fundraising campaign. And then once they're done with their fundraising campaign, we'll come back and do a full report on just the donations that were around the library project. So tonight's recommended, m recommended action is to the re receive the report, and with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions from the council? No question. Uh, uh, council Member Bertrand? Yeah, I have a question. Um, maybe you don't have the itemized donations, whatever, but um, I know the current part of the uh, donation for the library right now is the pavers. Yes. Uh, which has been very successful. Do you have any idea how much uh, we're getting right now with pavers and is that donation cycle still available for the public to participate in? So the, the paver donations, my understanding is the deadline has been extended a month at this point, okay. maybe extended again. We've had a lot of activity in the last week or so as we approach that deadline. Off the top of my head, I wanna say we're getting close to $60,000 wow. of donations for just the pavers. Can you it's probably close to 200, it's probably a little more than 200 pavers now. Okay, can you tell the public what the pavers are and where th where they'll be placed in the present library, the uh, current li uh, library to be planned? <laughs> I can <laughs> tell finished. you what the pavers are as far as placement, I'll probably have to defer to Steve, but there's okay. three different options for pavers, um, a six by six, a six by 12, and a 12 by 12, um, 125, 225, or 325 based on the size of the paver. And then as you get larger, you get uh, your more lines. You put more lines of text in there. And I don't know the exact number. I wanna say that's like the first paver is one line, the second is two, and then three. But don't hold me to that one. As okay. far as placement, I'm gonna defer. Okay. Uh, the, yes, the pavers will be located uh, to the outside the uh, front door of the library. There'll be three, this is kind of a, a patio or sorts, um, and they'll be in that walkway. Uh, in three sections. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? No? Uh, is there any member of the public that would like to address the council? Seeing none, uh, we'll bring it back for any further council comments. I just no? wanna say thank you to all the donors for um, supporting our city and um, yeah, that's it, thank you. Great. Yes. I was prepared to read off the list but thank you for putting them on a slide because I, I totally agree with Yvette. It's amazing how much the um, businesses in particular and like junior lifeguards also have been donating a lot of money uh, to the city and um, greatly appreciated. And a lot of these donors uh, donate on an annual basis. So it's not one time, it's, it's every year. Yep. Well, the junior guards is great. Uh, the concerts are great. All these things are just wonderful that contribute to the uh, wonderfulness of being here in Capitola. Great, well, thank you so much. Uh, if there's no additional council comments and there's no additional items, what? I have a comment. You have another comment? Yes, Okay, go ahead. not on this side, but on general. So um, I think it's been suggested in terms of uh, Jamie, 
a uh, council item and it was brought up I just want to remind it uh, that this I think needs to be dealt with and that is to um, have a session or have an off-site session that deals with protocols and procedures for how uh, City Council should be in terms of conducting public business. Um, I'd like to add to that that we also include the fact in the City Planning Commissions so that we're all on board and maybe, you know, Council of Environment and other committees so that we're all on board in terms of how we interact amongst each other and how we are conducting business for the City Capitol. Thank you. So this has been requested in the past. I'm just extending it to other committees so that we have across the board a uniform way of doing business for the city capital. Just so I have clarity on this, we have a pending item, which is a code of conduct for the council, and that was going to be a code of conduct for the council, I think, for other city officials. Uh, that is pending. Is that what we're talking about here? Um, yeah, I, it may be pending in terms of your planning process, but it hasn't been brought to us yet. Oh, no, it hasn't happened yet. It, it's right. coming. So um, I'd like to add that, you know, uh, at this point, I hope the city council would agree with this. I'd like to see other commissions be part of this. I, I don't think it's just the city council that needs to benefit from this, but city planning, uh, council and environment, and other issue, other council committees that you know we appoint members to. We will be agendizing that for coming meeting. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. <laughs> and okay. Also invite the committee members, obviously. <laughs> All right. Thank you for that comment. Uh, with that, we have reached the end of our meeting. Uh, this meeting is adjourned. Take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Good night. Yeah. Okay. And now we uh, will be successor moving agency. on to the successor agency meeting. So now I call that meeting to order. Ow. Sorry, was that you? No, it was I, perfect. I, I'll get, <laughs> perfect. I'll get a mouse pad or something. Yeah, like a little easy. Okay. Uh, roll call. Board member story. Still here. <laughs> For uh, board or staff comments. Does any staff have any comments? Do any members of the board have any comments? I have one question, though, that's all. Wait, so is it related to an item on the agenda? Oh, excuse me, yes. It is, okay, let's wait till we get there. We're almost right. there. Uh, item, next item, consent calendar. Uh, does any member of the public wish to address the board on uh, the consent calendar? Seeing none. Move to uh, approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Um, Aye. Aye. Um, story, sorry. Any I have, to, have to change programming. That was story and author. Thank you. Any opposed? No abstentions. Uh, carries unanimously. Moving on to item 8A, general government and public hearings. And that is a recognized obligation payment schedule. Staff report, please. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, so this is just the annual adoption of our recognized obligation payment schedule related to the Capitola Successor Agency. At this point, we're down to, to basically three items. Uh, we have, we're requesting a total of $133,070. $15,000 is for the Housing Authority Rental Assistance Program. $88,070 is for the Castle Mobile Home Housing Assistance Program, and that will be the end of their funding under the successor agency. That's why it's that oddball number. And then uh, 15,000 for our admin costs. Um, I believe that next year, now that we're wrapping up Castle, I'm gonna have conversations with the housing authority, but I believe that they're pretty much wrapping up their program. So next year we will probably be doing this for the final time is what the hope is. But um, for tonight, the recommended action is to approve the fiscal year 2021 recognized obligation schedule. And if uh, that is approved this evening, then I will be at the countywide oversight meeting on January 21st to get the oversight approval, and then we send it off to the state by February 1st. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Great. Questions? Um, how much longer for this? I understand Castle because we had not extended. I, I believe that next year we'll be able to fi file our final ROPS. I just need to confirm that. I need to go through the, um, the housing authority agreement one more time but we're wrapped up with Castle. We're pretty much done with Rispin, and um, I just need to see what's left with the housing authority. I will probably do a final ROPS next year, but there could be another lingering payment or two after that, but we're getting really close to the end. Any further questions? With that, we'll bring it to the public. If there's any member of the public, seeing none, we would like to return to council comments and motion. Motion to approve staff recommendation. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries unanimously.
Uh, and with that, we are adjourned. Thank you.